It is 737 in the Twin Cities. One degree, folks, one degree. Uh, Well, amongst the diseases that I think are are so cruel is Parkinson's, uh, which slowly sees people degenerate in terms of their ability to use their muscles, to use parts of their bodies. Uh, And I I thought it would be interesting to just kind of visit uh, with an expert about uh, the kinds of advances that are being made. Also, you know, there are so many prominent people that have Parkinson's disease. Uh, one of the latest to announce that he has been battling Parkinson's is uh, 76-year-old Reverend Jesse Jackson. Uh, joining me right now is Dr. Eleanor Orick uh, from Alina Hospitals, uh, Abbott Northwestern Hospital, and she's with the Noran Neurological Clinic. Uh, and Dr. Orick, am I saying your name correctly? Uh, it's O'Rehek. O'Rehek. It's a, okay, well, my apologies. Yeah. Um, no, that's all right. But anyway, uh, Dr. O'Rehek, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you know, I think that we do see people um, with Parkinson's. You certainly hear about it, and it just seems like such a devastating ailment to deal with. I guess what I'd like to ask, if you can just start, what what is Parkinson's exactly, and what does it do, what exactly does it do to people? So Parkinson's is complex, so trying to explain it can be uh, tricky, but it is uh, what we call a neurodegenerative disease and the second most common neurodegenerative disease, and that means that it's a disease that affects the nerve cells in the brain and uh, causes progressive loss of cells, and in Parkinson's that affects uh, the ability for the brain to control how you move and causes things like tremor and slowness, stiffness, and a variety of other symptoms as well. And is it, is the path of the disease the same in everybody or does it develop and progress at different rates? It uh, varies for everybody. So that makes it a challenge. I mean, it's sometimes even a challenge just to diagnose it. And then even if you get more of a clear diagnosis, trying to tell people, you know, what does the future look like? A lot of questions is like, well, what should I expect? And it, it is a really hard question sometimes to answer because everybody has different symptoms that they're struggling with. And then treatment varies for everybody and how you respond to treatment. And and life doesn't stop when you get diagnosed with Parkinson's. So then you're trying to live your life and you have Parkinson's thrown into the mix. So it just uh, gives everybody different challenges and struggles that they're they're trying to deal with. So this is the disease that I I think, you know, nobody's done more for than Michael J. Fox in terms of publicizing it. He was so young, though. When he right. got it. Yeah. Is there an average age for onset? Yeah, he was on the very young side. So the average age is in your 60s, uh, kind of mid-60s. There are people, though, that get it in their 20s and 30s, so that's that's important to remember. But for the most part, it's uh, older age is a, is a big risk factor. Um, can you um, sort of kind of give the list of what – and you mentioned that it's often frequently misdiagnosed – um, what are some of the um, what are some of the common early symptoms, and why would it be misdiagnosed? Because it, you know, it's a pretty well known ailment. It is well known, and, and if people have tremor, that's obviously more visible, and it's a particular kind of tremor. So not all tremors are Parkinson's, which is a misconception. But you don't have to have Parkin or tremor to have Parkinson's. So. That also, if you don't have any tremor and it's more the slowness and stiffness that develops slowly over time, people think it's aging or other things or they have pain in a shoulder and so they go around to different people trying to figure out what's causing the the pain when it actually is Parkinson's underlying it. And so... Is it often misdiagnosed though? Um, Yes. I mean, it it is. I I don't know the percentage of it, but until you find the the right neurologist or specialist to look for the right things that can go um, misdiagnosed or undiagnosed for a long time. And how about medications? I mean, how effective are they and and are there potential breakthroughs around the corner or is it something that's a long way off? Yeah, no, I think there are some breakthroughs that are uh, around the corner, there are met a lot of treatments that we have right now to help manage people's symptoms so people can have a really good quality of life for a long time living with Parkinson's. And um, what we're missing is medications and treatment options that actually stop the disease or um, 
slow the disease from progressing. So exercise, which I tell all my patients to do uh, as regularly as possible, is really the best thing that we have that may potentially slow the disease. So we're waiting on uh, some, some breakthroughs as far as other medications or treatments to offer people. Um, we're chatting with Dr. Eleanor O'Rehek. Uh, she's from the Norline Neurological and Abbott Northwestern. In terms of um, what people can do, what kind of lives they can lead, uh, you know, I was in a grocery store recently, actually downtown, and well, I'm not sure it was Lunds, and I, I was distracted by somebody moving in a very sort of jerky way. I didn't realize they had a uniform on, and I, as she said, and I now I feel mortified by it, but I said to one of the managers, I said, there's somebody kind of behaving erratically, which is not that unusual in downtown Minneapolis. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and they looked at me and said, well, it's our employee with Parkinson's. And I felt just terrible about it. But I, then I thought, well, good for them for, you know, for hiring people, but it must be very difficult when you have those kinds of, of tremors to hang, hold on to workplace situations. Yeah, it can be. And so that's why when it affects people, uh, before retirement age or before they're ready to stop working, it can be even more challenging. Or if you're trying to raise children, you know, there's a lot of things that make it more challenging to live with. The um, best thing you can do is try to get the medications managed right and exercise. And if you can do that, and there's deep brain stimulation and other treatment options that can help manage some of the, the tremors. And the jerky movements may have been dyskinesias, and so that's a, a medication side effect. So if you can get the dose of the medication adjusted correctly, it can help lessen those sometimes. So and what, what um, is there the, are ways to help. Yeah. And what is the final, I mean, how far does it go? I mean... Well, um, the end stages, I mean, are also variable. It doesn't itself uh, lead to death, but it can increase the risk of having complications like trouble swallowing that leads to pneumonia or fall risk, and then you end up fracturing a hip or something. So those are the things we, we work to look for and prevent if possible. And to what degree is it hereditary? So far, uh, to a small degree, we're learning more and more about the genetics of the disease the more we test people with it. Um, but right now, it's only about 10% of cases that seem to have a genetic correlation to it. Really? So you can't tell? I mean, is there a gene for it? Like if you, if you, if you have it in your family, can you go get tested and they'll say, oh, you've got such and such a gene like you can for breast cancer? Yes, you could. I mean, so there are certain more common ones related to it that you can get tested for. I would caution not to do it unless you've talked to a genetic counselor just so you fully understand what that what that means if you do have the mutation, because not everybody goes on to get it even if you do have it. But um, that is something that's available. And in terms of, of the life expectancy, once somebody's been diagnosed, is there a set life expectancy or is it just something that people live with for decades. Right, yeah, people can live with it for 20, 30 years. So it's, I mean, everybody is different and it certainly, in it's like 15, 20 years or more, you're going to have a lot more trouble with it. And depending on what sorts of end-stage symptoms you have, uh, that makes it more or less challenging to, to live with it in later stages, but okay. um, certainly is possible. And are there is is it particularly certainly um, Reverend Jackson is you know there are some of these diseases that are more prevalent in certain you know uh, uh, ethnic groups is this does it sort of cut across every ethnic group uh, or in every country or is it more prevalent here in the U S. It does cut across all ethnic groups. I think the data on some of the different populations is lacking, so it's hard to know for for sure. But it certainly affects uh, everybody. All right. What would you like? And and again, the symptoms, those initial symptoms, which you'd say are often misdiagnosed. What are again? What are some of those that people should be aware of? Well, certainly tremor. If you have any uh, tremors, it's always good to get that checked out. At least ask your regular regular doctor and see if it's worth getting referred to a neurologist or a Parkinson's specialist. Um, if you start noticing there's changes in your walking or speech or handwriting, those are things that. Um, like the smaller writing can be signs of it. Um, so uh, I would say those things would be uh, worthy of, if you notice balance problems, certainly worthy of getting checked out. Okay. 
Well, interesting stuff, and obviously it's something that a lot of people, wonderful people, do have to live with. Uh, Dr. Eleanor Orek, or, Orehek, um, thank you so uh-huh. much for joining us to talk about Parkinson's. Yeah, of course. You're welcome. Absolutely. All right, folks, uh, much ahead on News Radio 830 WCCO.